Hi everyone, this lesson is on three parasitic infections we can get from eating uncooked or undercooked fish. So we're going to talk about those three different parasitic infections and some of the signs and symptoms that can occur from each of those infections. So many fish species are intermediate hosts to parasitic organisms. So this is the reason why we can get parasitic infections from fish. So humans become infected by parasites through consumption of uncooked or undercooked fish. And many different species of fish that are consumed can contain parasites. And some of these include salmon and whitefish and others as well. And we can get it from eating sushi and sashimi and fish tartare and some other dishes that contain uncooked or undercooked fish, especially if those fish products haven't been handled properly. So the three types of parasitic infections that we can get include the following. Diphylobothriasis, clonorchiasis, and anisochiasis. We're going to talk about each of these infections and what causes them in the next upcoming slides. Let's first talk about diphylobothriasis. Diphylobothriasis is a condition caused by infection with a tapeworm or a cestode known as diphylobothrium latum. So this is where we get the name diphylobothriasis. It comes from diphylobothrium latum. So Diphylobothrium latum is the fish tapeworm. We can get this tapeworm from consumption of many different species. So Diphylobothrium latum is going to be an important parasite that can cause infection in humans. When a person eats the juvenile stage of this tapeworm in an uncooked or undercooked fish product, it takes two to six weeks before that juvenile form of the tapeworm develops into the adult tapeworm. Before we start to see signs and symptoms, it takes about two to six weeks. And some of the signs and symptoms that can occur include passage of proglottids. So proglottids are the little pieces of the tapeworm that can be found in the stool of the patient. It can look like grains of rice. This is going to be a very common finding in patients with a tapeworm infection. Along with this, we can see anal pruritus. So pruritus is an itching sensation. We can also see abdominal pain, bowel habit changes. So we can see diarrhea or constipation or an alternating of these two. We can see an allergic reaction in some cases. So a rash could occur in patients with this tapeworm infection. And then what's important about infection with this particular tapeworm species, Diphylobothrium latum, is that it can cause a vitamin B12 deficiency. And it can cause a vitamin B12 deficiency in up to 40% of people that are infected with it. So it's a very important finding in patients with this particular tapeworm infection. And vitamin B12 deficiency can lead to a number of different signs and symptoms, including neurological signs and symptoms, psychological signs and symptoms, and a macrocytic anemia. With regards to the neurological findings, there can be issues with symmetric paresthesias. So that would be numbness and tingling sensations on parts of the body, especially the extremities, so the arms and the legs, and that would be symmetric, so it'd be on both sides of the body. Some of the psychological findings from vitamin B12 deficiency can include depression, cognitive issues like reduced memory or reduced attention, and then anemia can have its own host of signs and symptoms, including pallor, fatigue, shortness of breath, and many others as well. Now let's talk about clonorchiasis. So clonorchiasis is a condition caused by infection with the liver fluke species known as clonorchis sinensis. So clonorchis sinensis is also known as the Chinese liver fluke. This parasite can reside in certain species of fish and when consumed it can cause infection in humans. When a patient does consume it in raw or undercooked fish, it takes about 10 to 30 days before symptoms can occur. So that's the incubation period from when a patient consumes the parasite to when they start to have signs and symptoms, it is 10 to 30 days on average. So what are some of those signs and symptoms? Some of them include liver issues. This is a liver fluke, so it's going to cause some liver issues. So these can include jaundice, so that would be a yellowing of the skin and a yellowing of the whites of the eyes. This is specifically known as scleral icterus. We can also see a right upper quadrant pain or tenderness, so right upper quadrant would be where the liver is located. So that is on the right side of the patient's abdomen on the upper side above the belly button, so it's in this area here. And that would be pain and tenderness, again, that is due to liver inflammation. And there can also be gastrointestinal issues as well. And these can include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and loss of appetite. So these are some of the signs and symptoms from clonorchiasis. And then the last parasitic infection we're going to talk about here is anisochiasis. So anisochiasis is a condition caused by infection with multiple parasite species of the family anisochidae. So there are several different parasite species that can cause infection and lead to this condition. And depending on which species infects a person will determine some of the signs and symptoms that occur. So often infections will be broken down into non-invasive and invasive cases. So non-invasive, this would mean that they are localized to the gastrointestinal system. And invasive cases would mean that they 
are infecting the gastrointestinal system, but they have also escaped into other tissues in the body as well. And this particular parasitic infection has a very short incubation period. It actually has an incubation period of one to 12 hours, and on average, it is about six hours. So from when a patient consumes a contaminated or infected piece of fish that contains these parasites to when they start to have symptoms is only one to 12 hours. And again, it's average of six hours. So the symptoms can occur very rapidly. So this is going to be in contrast to the other infections we talked about earlier on in this lesson. So when a patient does start to have signs and symptoms, these are going to include parasitic gastritis. So it's going to be an inflammation of the stomach. This is also going to lead to an epigastric pain. And this is going to be a sudden onset of often quite severe epigastric pain. Patients can also have nausea and vomiting and diarrhea. And some patients can also have what is known as tingling throat syndrome. This is where some of the parasites actually get up into the throat and cause some sensation of a tingling feeling in the throat. And then some patients can have urticaria, which would be itchy hives. So these are some of the findings in this condition. And oftentimes this condition may be misdiagnosed as some other gastrointestinal disorders. So some cases could be mistaken for appendicitis, for instance. So it can be a very odd presentation. It can occur rapidly and it can have severe symptoms. So it can often look like another condition. So because this could be misdiagnosed, it can be important to think about if a patient has consumed raw or undercooked fish recently, especially within several hours. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.